Okay, I'm just going to race, race through this. Um, I was honored to participate with the BioBrick team, and we were focused on um, building disease profiles for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease through discovery of biomarker signatures of disease enabled by trans, the Transmart platform. Very important. Um, so Hiroko Dodge, Venus So, Japing Ling, Benkata, uh, Sadagam, Thomas Misko, and myself. Um, so, you know, one of the things I found that is really wonderful is that, um, you know, the, our group represented uh, five institutions, you know, um, and that's amazing, you know, having, having data scientists from two different pharmaceuticals work together, let alone uh, academics. So uh, it's a really amazing experience, and I think that uh, the other data scientists, the feedback I got was like, it's so great because we can't usually talk to each other. So that was a really positive thing about the Dayathon. Uh, just that social aspect was wonderful. Um, so uh, just briefly, therapeutic challenge, research aims and objectives, biomarkers that may serve as disease signatures for both Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's, and then conclusions. Um, therapeutic challenge, you know about these. There's no therapies for Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's. Um, uh, phase three trials haven't... Um, been successful in disease mo modifying drugs because of uh, lack of efficacy or toxicity. Um, research efforts are moving towards earlier in the disease, and so finding these biomarkers becomes even more important, um, and to find something that's truly sensitive. Okay, so let's. Um, the challenge in, in doing this. Are to are the, you know to ask the questions? Are there prognostic biomarkers that distinguish the pre-symptomatic uh, subjects from those who remain normal? And are there unique polygenic mappings to stage the disease? And can we screen a large number of subjects without spending a lot of money? Because things like PET scans and MRIs are very expensive. Um, I think a single PET scan is about five thousand dollars. So. Um, we need something that's that scales. Uh, this is a just a a model of of uh, for Alzheimer's disease progression, and you can see right here. You know, this is uh, the accumul well, the accumulation of of uh, beta amyloid, and what's not shown here. This is the idealized curve, but you what actually happens is it actually reaches a certain asymptote then falls down. But, um, you know, beta amyloid is a is a, an early indicator of the disease. And so, just by the nature of using the Transmart platform and the data that we have at the Dayathon, we asked ourselves, well, you know, how, how do well-known proteins in the field correlate with disease status? And so we looked at some of the published materials and to look across the two diseases, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, we know that uh, beta amyloid, uh, CSF, you would expect it to go down in Alzheimer's disease. It hasn't been studied in Parkinson's. Uh, uh, tau in the CSF fluid uh, would tend to go up, but then tend to go down in Parkinson's disease. And alpha-synuclein uh, in Alzheimer's tends to stay the same across in Parkinson's disease. Um, it goes from uh, high to low. So looking at the data itself, you know, to our uh, pleasure, uh, we were able to confirm uh, that CSF amyloid in, 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 in this data concurs with the published literature. Actually, it, you know, the M beta amyloid goes down in CSF, and, you know, that kind of, uh, we hope that it kind of correlates to the beta amyloid aggregating in the brain. You have less in the CSF because it's getting deposited. Um, a quick comparison, uh, taking a look at uh, Parkinson's disease and um, comparing CSF uh, of alpha-synuclein versus total tau. We could see this... Um, this graph done in Spotfire, the slight difference between controls, Parkinson's disease, 
and a population that's called SWED, and those are scans with evidence of dopamine deficiency. So uh, there, there is a population of Parkinson's disease, well, par I say Parkinson's disease patients in quotes, because there's a, you know, there's a philosophical argument that, you know, if you don't have dopamine uh, depletion in the brain, do you really have Parkinson's disease? These patients present with the same motor problems issues as Parkinson's disease patients, but it doesn't seem like they have a deficiency of dopamine in the brain. But uh, as you can see here, you can see a slight um, uh, dis uh, separation in this population. So there, there's a drop in tau and alpha sin in PD in the PeepMind data set, but not in Alzheimer's disease. Um, CSF and alpha synuclein correlates quite well with CSF total tau in PPMI data sets. So then we take a look uh, at um, Alzheimer's disease and CSF total tau is significantly higher in Alzheimer's disease versus healthy controls. So this is something that um, we would expect. One, one analysis that's never been done is take a look at alpha synuclein Alzheimer's and we found that there's really no difference. So taking the next leap, uh, identifying new biomarkers. So um, you know, trying to identify new biomarkers by different expression analysis of genomic expression data from selected patient subsets, normal to normal versus normal to mild cognitive um, uh, MCI, mild mild cognitive. Impairment. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> it's a little bit worrisome. <laughs> I just displayed it and explained it at the same time. Uh, so, <laughs> looking at non coding, so differential expression in genes as markers predictive disease progression. You look at non coding RNA, transcri transcription factors, and the Wnt pathway. So, um, here are the top uh, 10 um, you know, code, uh, pro protein coding RNAs. Uh, one is non-coding, um, and they were selected from the, their levels of gene expression. And we looked at one that, that really came out, um, that uh, really came out in a, in, a, in a data, and it's a ZF. Uh, ZNF350, and we could see that, um, you know, we could see it, uh, uh, the significant difference um, as, as represented in the bars, and then here in the circles right here, you could see that uh, the, the, for the, the population that have this gene, uh, we could see in, uh, that, that there is a quite, quite a, a stark difference that this, these these folks are heading towards Alzheimer's disease. That they convert, uh, they're pre-symptomatic, but they do convert to uh, mild cognitive impairment. You know, as a, you know, inferring that maybe they're on their way uh, to Alzheimer's. So, um, so after differential expression analysis, you know, the the, the these genes can be looked at um, and. and uh, in, in more detail. So, in conclusion, uh, we were able to con confirm the literature findings of proteins associated with Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's. Uh, comparison of these proteins across diseases in search of common pathways and better resolution of those pathways. Explore new avenues of study. And we found a lot of bugs and feature requests for Transmart. So, uh, a really a great exercise. You know, this was done in three days, and people have never looked at Parkinson's disease before, and um, we were able to, you know, gain a beachhead and at least confirm with these with these data sets right here what was written in, you know, published in literature. So, you know, we could we could, we could get uh, this kind of concurrence of someone who has, you know, spent a few years in publishing in three days. So I thought that was a very powerful experience. Thank you. Any questions? Okay.